Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future. So the last place we left off, we had just taken a tour of the labs, and uh, man, it was pretty awesome. Great artwork in that. I'd love to know who some of those Sonas were. If you guys, any of you guys in the comments can tell me. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's jump right back into it. Let's see what Mary, uh, what else Mary has in store for us today. All right, alarm chain, you're up. Let's go. Okay. I figured you might have wanted some answers about that guy and his FBI cronies at some point. Maybe someplace safe to talk about it without that rabid dog showing up to mock you midway through. And like I said earlier, you're among friends here. I see. And... And speaking of friends... Yep! Natty! <laughs> Hello, Natalie. Hey guys, how you doing? Before either of you could notice her approaching, Natalie's already beaming at both of you from behind Mary's chair, a wide smile on her earnest face. Mary practically jumped out of her seat at her junior's appearance, every hair in her body flaring up at once as she did so. You don't think you've ever seen her this puffy before, truth be told. Well, if I didn't die of a heart attack now, I guess I never will. Oh, oh dear, I'm, I didn't scare you that bad, did I? Gosh, why does this always happen? You can't help but laugh at the quaint spectacle before you, even if it is a little mean-spirited. Maybe it's because you've had to endure Natalie's abrupt entrances more than you could account in the past few days, but you have to admit, it is pretty funny when it happens to others. Anyway, I sorry for scaring you guys. I swear, I was just trying to say hi. It's, it's alright, Nats. You didn't scare me. Speak for yourself. That was at least two of my nine lives gone. The Siamese's words, which seem to have which seem to have shared in jest, are nonetheless enough to thoroughly confuse you. Nine lives? Does that do the synthetic project or something? I can't laugh off your questions with a knowing smile on her face. Of course not. I'm still very much... I'm very much still human, thank you. It's just an old saying that was popular back in my days. You wouldn't get it. How old are you? <laughs> right. So, age-related irony is fair game with her. That's good to know, at least. It means you can already start planning your vengeance over her basically calling you a kid, and by God, will it be sweet. As soon as you figure out just how old the scientist really is. Regardless, what brings you here, Nats? I thought you were still busy handling those files I sent you earlier. Actually, I just finished taking care of those. It wasn't that complicated, really. And then I heard from someone that Isaac had come to visit, so I decided to come see you. Wow, that's impressive. I was pretty sure you'd need more time to sort through all that data. <laughs> you sure you're not skimping out on work or something? You're pretty sure that Mary's messing around as usual, but that doesn't stop Natalie from taking her words seriously, nevertheless. No, of course not. You know I always give 100% wherever, whenever I'm working on something. I'm just really fast like that, I swear. Even you have to admit that Natalie has always seemed like a very dependable girl. She always addressed your, very, your every issue as soon as it came up to the best of her ability, and never left you wanting for a better assistant. You don't find it difficult to believe that she's equally invaluable to Mary as an assistant as well. So wait, how come you're working today? I thought you were taking the day off. Oh no, I come to work on Saturdays as well. I just can't stay away from this place. Huh. I see. Is that why you didn't call me this morning? Upon hearing your innocent question, Natalie Quinn quite literally falls from the clouds. Oh my gosh, did I really forget about calling you again? I knew I was forgetting something. Gosh, I'm such a... Labrador's self-deprecating words are interrupted by her boss, who dismisses her faults with a smile. Relax, Nats. It's the weekend. Isaac was just curious, is all. Besides, he's not even bummed about. It. He's not even bummed out about it. Isn't that right? The scientist gives you a knowing look, to which you reply with a simple nod. It's true. I was just a little surprised, is all. You're fine, Nats. K9 tries to buy into your reassuring words. It's cool that she's having a bit of trouble getting over her embarrassment. You decide to soften the mood with a joke or two, to try to ease her up. So, you come to work even on weekends? Is that out of your own free will, or...? It's not that hard to believe, is it? Mary laughs off her junior's remarks, as well as your own in incredulity. I assure you that both her and the rest of my colleagues here would, would gladly come back on Sunday as well. If only their body would allow them. But alas, everyone needs some everyone needs some rest every once in a while. See, here's the thing. I turned off. I turned off telegram notifications before I started making this video. How did it go off? <laughs> Ugh. Wow, you really love your work that much? 
Of course, I can't think of anything more exciting than this, honestly. You heard her. I assure you, few among scientists, few among my scientists and engineers would even, pre even refer to what they're doing here as working. This isn't just any kind of job, you see. We're creating synthetics here, creating the future of humanity. This isn't something you do for money or fame or any sense of personal accomplishments. This is something we do because it's right, because everyone deserves to bear the fruits of our work. We're changing humanity for the better. One innovation at a time, and knowing that is enough to bring us back to work time and time again. But I have to admit, the extras I make from overtime are pretty nice. As much as Mary likes to just and mess around, aside from her fun comment at the end, this time she felt more honest than ever. You never thought that she or the rest of the staff here would view this project in such a positive light. You already knew that everyone here cares deeply about the success of this technology, but you didn't expect their commitment to this job to be this strong. The future of humanity. That's what those people downstairs were saying, too. Kind of puts your whole existence right now into perspective, truth be told. It also helps you view Mary and her team in a new, much brighter light than ever before. Anyway, I think I bothered you guys for, for long enough. I'm sure you were having an important discussion before I interrupted you. Natalie interjects so loudly and unexpectedly you almost got yourself startled. You'd almost forgotten you were doing something important before Natalie arrived. Just goes to show you how invested you sometimes get in your own thoughts. Oh, uh, don't worry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Isaac, your voice. I need to, uh, need to, uh, upgrade to that uh, little uh, modulation voice box or whatever it is. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't worry. We hadn't actually started yet. Mary was just about to explain to me the whole deal with the FBI was... Mary was just about to explain to me what the whole deal with the FBI was since they came to visit me yesterday and all. Ooh, that sounds important, all right. Well, then, I'll just... The cat gently lays her hand on the canine's thigh before the latter can leave, effectively stopping her in her tracks. Wait, 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 wait. Wait just randomly puts their hand on someone's thigh. Huh. Interesting. Actually, why don't you join us for this conversation, Nats? I figured you might be interested, given that this does involve Isaac here and all. Mary briefly turns to face you. You don't mind, do you, Isaac? Of course not. The more the merrier. You turn to look at your friend, who's been awkwardly standing behind her boss ever since the beginning of this conversation. The Labrador appears a little hesitant, but also quite intrigued by the offer. Well, I was feeling a little bummed out the other day when Isaac was asking me all that stuff and I couldn't answer. Sure, I'll stay for the lecture. With that said, the young lady finally lets herself fall on top of one of the sturdy chairs, eager to listen to Mary's explanation. She almost feels like a college student, bent forward with her chest and arms as if trying to listen as hard as she can. It's kind of cute in a way, you have to admit. Even her boss is looking at her with a delighted smirk on her face. With everyone set, you decide to start the conversation yourself, so as to properly break the ice. Well then, I guess I might as well begin by asking, just what in the world does the FBI want with me? The cat lady makes as if to answer your question, but can ultimately do nothing but shake her head in defeat. I honestly can't say. They're secretive like that, those idiots. But I assure you, them being a nuisance is nothing new. They have an entire department dedicated to breathing on Pandora's neck. For real? An entire department? You definitely hadn't heard of that before. Does the Bureau create specialized teams like that often, or is Pandora a special case? I mean, how can you blame them? The company almost brought about the end of the world. That's kind of a thing you want to keep tabs on. <laughs> like, ah, just a slap on the wrist for you guys, and don't do that again. A little naughty finger wave. <laughs> you're very, you're very, very bad man. Very bad. <laughs> Imagine if they had an entire department dedicated solely to tracking synthetics like you. I bet they do. No, you definitely want to. Don't want to imagine that. Yep. They're persistent like that, double-checking our financial statements, vetting all our personnel, getting involved in things they shouldn't, as they always do. And you can guess who's, who's, who's the head of that department. Bradbury. You suppose that explains why he had all his agents, and even a synthetic following his orders. Even so, you never could have imagined he'd turned out to be the head of the department of the FBI, much less one focused exclusively on Pandora. What sort of company are they to warrant special attention from the likes of him? Well, knowing their past, you can probably guess the reasons behind that. Still, why is he so interested in the synthetic project? And me? No clue. No clue. They've never been this interested in something we made before, and I've been here for a long time. A long time? Sounds a little ambiguous, even by Mary's standards. Is that on purpose? How long are we talking, to be exact? 
about 40 years, give or take. 40 years? Just how old are you exactly? Now, now, Isaac, is that really a question you should be asking a lady? Um, I... I think if shame suddenly washes over your face as you realize how far you've taken your curiosity. You really ought to control yourself better than this. However, right as you're about to drop this little tangent entirely... She... Oh! Shit. <laughs> Nats. Nats to the rescue, and in more trouble. She's 64, if you're really wondering. <laughs> Natalie, I never said you could say that. The Siamese appears to be a little embarrassed over the bras and Labrador's words, whereas you're still busy trying to accept what you know as a fact. You had a, you had a clue or two that Mary was a little advanced with her years, but 64? That's way older than you thought she'd be. I've got to admit, I've never seen someone in her 60s look as youthful, youthful as you do. In spite of the awkwardness that washed over her face, Mary struggles to reply to your comment with a smile. What can I say? The miracles of modern plastic surgery. It's not quite the same as literally choosing your own body from scratch, but with enough money and a competent doctor, it's almost a perfect substitute. She says that, but I don't believe her. I bet she's a sorceress who cast a spell of infinite youth on herself. A sorceress? Isn't that a little unscientific coming from a researcher like her? Ha! Huh. I suppose that'd explain our, success with our successes with synthetics as well, wouldn't it? But let's take a break with all the jokes. You're supposed to be talking about the FBI. Oh, oh right, sorry. Simi sighs and shakes her head as she returns to what she was saying earlier, a surprisingly pleased smile on her face in spite of the slight embarrassment she had to endure. Anyway, like I said previously, those jerks are a well-known thorn in our sides. They've been trying to get a hold of our synthetics ever since our first successful transition, with little success. I guess that makes sense. All the, other live, all the others live secluded lives in highly secure facilities across the globe, so I imagine that it was easy to drive them away at every turn. Which, I guess, explains why he's targeting me in particular. Now it's your turn to feel ashamed over being unable to figure that out. In hindsight, it should have been obvious. But again, it could also be because of you beating those guys up the other day. That might have been enough to land you on his radar, assuming that Jasper was right about him being aware of that. Right. With your choice to resume living as a civilian, no wonder Bradbury's focusing all his efforts onto you. Whatever they're meant for. You remember him trying to recruit you near the end of the, near the end of his speech to have you act as a double agent on his behalf, investigating Pandora in search of something. He definitely couldn't have chosen a worse method of going about that for sure. Who in the world would assert his doubt in someone else's humanity before trying to convince them to work for him? Still, it might just be the conspiracy theorist lurking in you, but you don't feel comfortable with sharing this information with Mary yet. If there's a chance, however minuscule, that Pandora truly is hiding something, you should try to keep your cards hidden for the time being. Even if that means keeping things hidden from your friends. Alright, so I guess that explains why Bradbury's after me. But what about that other synthetic that was with him the other day? The other synthetic? Yeah, the other one. If I recall correctly, Bradbury called that one Harlan. What a creep that guy was. Always silent, staring at you with those sharp eyes of his, like a guard dog, trained to maul any trespassers on sight. Even if the trespasser was Bradbury and his posse. Mary seems a little unsure about how to approach her question once again, seemingly clueless as to where to begin. Like Natalie said, keeping Bradbury off our synthetics has been easy so far for the most part, especially when he actually believed our excuses. But buying his lenience had a price. A price? Yeah, one day Bradbury showed up with an offer. He'd let us continue our experiments on synthetics with minimal supervision for the time being in exchange for a favor on our behalf. A favor? Yep, he wanted a synthetic of his own, and he was very meticulous with the details. He wanted a cutting-edge chassis, add-ons fresh out of the oven, and even some custom mods to the black box. It's like he showed up with a straight-up grocery list. I had to think about it for a while, but eventually I had to accept. And that's how Harlan was born? Intriguing origin story, if nothing else. Then again, you already had a feeling that Harlan was not just another run-of-the-mill synthetic. If Bradbury insisted that Mary turn him into an android in order for her to continue her duties undisturbed, he must have been a very important individual to the St. Bernard. But just who in the world was he? You ask your friend for some clarifications, only to be met with a disappointed sigh of defeat. I really don't know. I only saw him, or what I assumed to be him, on the day of the actual transition. He was fairly old. Maybe in his 40s or 50s, though his body was so battered by gunshot wounds and scars that I could hardly tell. He showed up with his own medical entourage, keeping him alive by any means necessary until the procedure was complete. The guy himself was out cold. Sounds like he had it worse than you did. 
not even you needed that sort of help on the days leading up to the procedure, and by the time your condition your condition worsened, there was hardly anything anyone could do to help. And again, it's also possible that the extra medics were just there because, because here Bradbury had the money to afford them. Did he ever say anything, even post-transition? Nope, though he definitely can speak if you're wondering about that. I know that muzzle design is a little ambiguous. We were still testing things out back then. Oh, that sounds cool! I wasn't around back then, so I never got to see what old synthetics used to look like. You gotta show me some prototypes one of these days. As much as you share Natalie's enthusiasm on the topic, your mind's still too busy thinking about Harlan to worry about old synthetic body parts. So, how long ago did this happen? Hmm, I'd say about six months. That long? What in the world has he been up to in the meantime? Again, no clue. I wish I could tell you more than this, but sadly that's all I know. The guy's been around Bradbury ever since he reawakened, though you can hardly tell he's there half the time, and Bradbury himself never talks about him either. The St. Bernard did seem a little hesitant to talk about Harlan during the brief time you met him, though why that would be, you can't say. You doubt that it's just an effort to improve their chances at intimidating you. There must be some reason behind all this secrecy. I wonder if it's his brother or something. That's alright. That's already more info than I had yesterday. I appreciate you being as thorough as you could and not hiding anything from me. The Siamese looks away from you for a moment, clearly still a little embarrassed from their, her conversation with you yesterday. Right. Either way, I don't know how much we can keep Bradbury away from you. Knowing the FBI, they'll just keep fabricating reasons to come check up on you or whatever until they're pleased. But you're going to make it as hard as possible for them to do so, I take it. You can bet on that, Isaac. We are not letting those goons get their way with you. Not a chance. We'll find a way to stop them from messing around with you eventually, I promise. And I'll do my best, too. Last time you had to deal with that guy on your own, but the next time he shows up, I'll be there to give him a piece of my mind. The two girls' confident look and dead certain words do wonders to reassure you, in spite of how uncertain you still feel about this problem. Bradbury, Harlan, the FBI, you definitely didn't account for them being involved when you chose to become a synthetic. But there's still so much you don't know about them, you feel as though you understand things a little better now thanks to their help. You'd certainly feel relieved if only something else didn't happen since yesterday morning to inspire doubts and curiosity in you. Natalie is quick to notice the strange look in your eyes as you turned away from them. What's wrong, Isaac? Is something else bothering you? No, I... No point in hiding it, you suppose. The encounter with that strange entity from earlier in the day still plays over and over in the back of your mind, demanding your attention. You still don't know anything about that monster, about what it is and what it can do. Maybe you should ask Mary about it, now that you have a chance. Well, actually, yeah. Can I ask you something completely unrelated? Mary raises an eyebrow at your query, a little, a little surprised by the look on your face as you turn towards her. Sure. I'm all ears. Right. Well, you briefly ponder just how much you know you just how much you should share about what happened with your friends. Opening up with I saw a weird shadow demon on the train today and that really freaked me out might not be the best way to approach this topic. You said to be a little more vague, so as to not give the Siamese or Labrador any weird ideas about you. What do you know about abilities? The canine's eyes widen to disproportionate amounts as she tries to process your question, and Mary's aren't too far behind. You didn't expect the sort of sudden change from such a simple question, so you try to ask the two of them if they're alright, only for your handler to swiftly beat you to the punch. H hold on, don't tell me. You developed an ability? What? That is not what you were trying to convey at all, so much for not giving them any weird ideas. Look, I think you... Oh my gosh, that's so cool! We've been looking for something like that for... N no, I never said that. It takes a while for you to calm, you down, to calm your enthusiastic assistant down, together with Mary's help. As disappointed as the feline is to hear denial, at least you didn't react quite as badly as Natalie did. Good lord, Nats, don't just assume things like that. So sorry, I didn't mean to jump the gun so quickly. The girl seems thoroughly dejected in a way you've never seen her before. Looking in her eyes is like that of a kid who's been looking forward to visiting a theme park for years, only to be denied at the last minute. It's actually rather depressing to look at. You didn't mean to sour her mood so much. Either way, I'm sorry for giving you guys the wrong impression. I... Nonsense, Isaac, you're totally fine. Yeah, like I said, it's it's my fault for jumping, for jumping to conclusions, too. Which, again, sorry about that. I didn't mean to scare you. It's just that, well, we've been waiting for something like that to happen for so long. Even I... You've been waiting for a synthetic with an ability to show up? The woman quietly nods at you, too busy pondering to reply directly. Can synthetics even have abilities? Nobody knows, but it'd solve our problem, all of our problems if they could. Solve all your problems? What do you mean? 
Omen hesitates to answer, once again lost in thought. You can't tell whether she's having trouble recalling the information she wants to share or whether it is so complex she has to figure out how to convey it properly. Hmm, that's a pretty convoluted topic, truth be told. How about Yuri? How about you answer, Natalie? The young Labrador is at first surprised by her boss's request, but she ultimately agrees with a beaming look on her face, and I am going to save it right there for the next video. So they're, since they're launching into a whole other thing. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can, and go check out No More Future. Sedge and his team do awesome work. Go give them some love and support. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I love you all. Bye-bye!